Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents, as its special Christmas program, Walt Disney's enchanting Snow White. Starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Dorothy Warrenshaw. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another memorable musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As our singing Christmas greeting to you, we have selected Walt Disney's enduring and lovely Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And I'm going to tell it to you tonight, just as I've often told it to my three children. Ready? And close your eyes and sort of dream with me. Once upon a time, there lived a lovely little princess named Snow White. Her wicked stepmother, the queen, feared that someday Snow White's beauty would be greater than her own. So she dressed the little princess in rags and forced her to work as a scullery maid. Each day, the vain queen consulted her mirror. Magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? Famed is thy beauty, majesty, but hold, a lovely maid I see. Rags cannot hide her gentle grace. Alas, she is more fair than thee. More fair? Reveal her name. Lips red as a rose, hair black as ebony, skin white as snow. So white. Out on the castle steps, scrubbing away, was the beautiful Snow White. As she worked, she told the secrets in her heart to her friend, the bird. Want to know a secret? Promise not to tell. We are standing by a wishing well. Make a wish into the well. That's all you have to do. And if you hear it echo, Better leave. I. Oh, now wait. Please don't run away. Now that I've found you, listen to what I have to tell you. Please. With a song I come to you like a troubadour. With a simple serenade that is nothing more. I have no lute to play, no tinkling guitar. 
Just a song to tell you how sweet to me you are. One song I have but one song. One song only for you. princess ran into the castle, not knowing that at that very moment, the wicked queen was plotting her death. My loyal huntsman. Yes, your majesty. You will take her into the forest, and you will kill her. But your majesty, the little princess... Silence! You know the penalty if you fail. I understand, your majesty. But the huntsman could not find it in his heart to kill the lovely Snow White. In the green shade of the forest, he fell to his knees. Forgive me. I beg of you, forgive me. I don't understand. Quick. Run away, hide in the woods, anywhere. Never come back. I cannot slay you. Slay me? Who wishes me dead? The queen. Now, quick, child, run. Go. The night of the forest closed around Snow White. The branches clutched at her like angry arms. The eyes in the night stared at her. Each log was a crocodile. The twisting vines were twisting nightmares. The little princess fell exhausted to the ground. Shivering, she shut her eyes. And then she slept and thought of the prince and dreamed of sunshine and smiles and heard the sound of his voice. With a smile and a song Life is just like a bright sunny day Your cares fade away And your heart is young With a smile and a song All the world seems to wake And a new rejoicing with you As the song is sung Rumbling when raindrops come tumbling. Remember, you're the one who can fill the world with sunshine. When you smile and you sing, everything is in tune and it's spring and life goes along. With a smile and a song. And when Snow White opened her eyes, the forest was fresh with morning sunshine. And spring was in the air.
for the second act of Snow White in just a moment. And now, here is a Christmas message for Mr. William T. Ferrissey, president of the Association of American Railroads. Before the week is out, America and the world once more will have celebrated Christmas. The celebrations will be in many and varied forms. But in all the ways in which mankind observes the birth of Christ, there is one thing in common. Their emphasis on the family ties, which are so close and so strong at this season. For Christmas is the great family festival. And perhaps through these family gatherings in so many lands, there may be foreshadowed the coming of the family of mankind, the coming of the day when man's great inventions shall be turned from the ways of war to those of peace. In the year that has passed since the Railroad Hours Christmas broadcast of 1952, the guns in Korea have become silent, and many American boys then under fire in the line have been united with their loved ones. There is new hope in the world arising from the president's proposal for an international pool of atomic knowledge to serve mankind. And it can truly be said, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Here's Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Walt Disney's Snow White, starring Gordon McRae and Dorothy Warren Show. Now Snow White looked around in the forest for a place to stay. As she turned to her friends for advice, to the birds and the bunnies and to the bashful chipmunks. I really feel quite happy now. I'm sure I'll get along somehow. Everything's going to be all right, but I do need a place to sleep tonight. I can't sleep in the ground like you. Or uh, in a tree, the way you do. And I'm sure no nest could possibly be big enough for me. Maybe you know where I could stay. In the woods somewhere? You do? Will you take me there? So the birds led the way and Snow White followed them until they reached a place that looked just like a dollhouse. Hello? May I come in? I guess there's no one home. Oh, why, it's adorable. What a cute little chair. Well, there are seven little chairs. There must be seven little children. And from the looks of the place, seven untidy little children. Mm, cobwebs everywhere. And dust. Oh, what a pile of dirty dishes. I know. I know. We'll clean the house and surprise them. Then maybe they'll let me stay. Now, you animals wash the dishes. While you tidy up the room. And you, yes, you... Clean the fireplace. What's that you say? Yes, you. Well, that's better. Now I'll use the dust cloth. Who is full while you work? Put on that grin and stop right in to whistle loud and long. Just hum a merry tune. Just do your best and take a rest and sing yourself a song. When there's too much to do, let it bother you. Forget your trouble, try to be just like the cheerful chickadee and whistle while you work. Come on, get smart, tune up and start to whistle while you work. Now you squirrel, sweep the room with your tail. Just whistle while you work. Well, you mustn't sweep it under the rug. Put on the tail. Right, 
all spick and span, she went up to the bedroom, and there she found seven tiny beds. She fell so fast asleep, she didn't even hear the seven little men as they marched home from work. And, of course, you know what they were singing. We dig, 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 dig in our minds the whole day through. To dig, 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 what we like to do. And while we dig, we all wake up and sing. Dig, 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 dig,
Who now is fairest one of all? Over the seven jeweled hills, beyond the seventh fall, in the cottage of the seven dwarfs, dwells Snow White, fairest one of all. Snow White still lives! With evil spells, the queen changed herself into an old hag and then prepared a poisoned apple. <laughs> One taste of this apple and the victim's eyes will close forever in the sleeping death. Only love's first kiss will awaken her, but she will be buried by then. <laughs> Snow White was very happy with the seven dwarfs. And every night they asked the same favor. Tell us a story. A true story. A love story. Well, all right. Once there was a princess. Was, was the princess you? Perhaps. Well, anyway, she fell in love. Uh, was it hard to do? It was very easy. Anyone could see that the prince was charming. The only one for me. Was he, uh, strong and handsome? Was he big and tall? There's nobody like him anywhere at all. Did he say he, he loved you? Did he steal a kiss? Oh, he was so romantic. I couldn't resist. to let no one in the house while they were gone. But her head was so full of dreams she could not resist an apple offered to her by an old peddler woman. It's a magic wishing apple, dearie. A wishing apple? Yes. One bite and all your dreams come true. Now, girlie, make a wish and take a bite. Perhaps there's someone you love. Well, there is someone. <laughs> I thought so. Old Granny knows a young girl's heart. I wish that he will carry me away to his castle where we will live happily ever after. Now, a bite of the apple. Let's see it fine, fine. I feel strange. Her breath will still. Ooh. Her blood to congeal. Now I'll be fairest to the man. The animals of the forest tried to warn the dwarves to rush back to save their beautiful princess. But they were too late. They did manage to chase the wicked witch through a storm to the very edge of a cliff where she plunged to her death. Then they returned to their princess. She was so beautiful, even in death, that the dwarfs could not find it in their hearts to bury her. They fashioned a bed of glass and of gold and kept eternal vigil at her side. The prince, who had searched far and wide, heard of the maiden who slept in the forest. One song my heart keeps singing. happened to Snow White? Is she asleep? Nobody can ever wake her up. There is a way. One way. Snow White. Snow White. Let my love awaken you. What are you going to do, Prince? 
Hey, he, he's kissing her. She's moving. Yeah, she's, she's waking up. He's putting her arms around him. Hey, fellas, maybe that love stuff ain't so bad after all. Snow White kissed them all tenderly. Doc, happy, sneezy, bashful, dopey, sleepy. And grumpy even kissed back. And then the prince swept her into his arms, onto his white horse. And they rode off into the sunburst sky toward a castle that seemed to be made from clouds. Hmm. And I'll bet you'll never guess what happened then. Why, they lived happily ever after. Show will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Eleanor Audley, Polly Bear, Dawes Butler, Arthur Q. Bryan, Jerry Hausner, Sam Hearn, Isabel Jewell, and to our entire company. Snow White, based on the Walt Disney production, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. You know, folks, Walt Disney has a new surprise for us. Come February, we'll be seeing his all live action picture, Rob Roy, The Highland Road, starring Richard Todd and Glynis John. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroad. Now, on behalf of the Railroad Hour family, the entire cast, and all those who have a hand in writing, producing, and directing our show, as well as myself, let me wish you and your loved ones the very merriest of Christmases. That goes for me, too, Gordon. And just a final word. You know, the greatest lift in the daily lives of our fighting men overseas is to receive letters at mail call from relatives, friends, neighbors, employers, or members of their company, church, union, or club. Getting letters regularly is essential to their morale. So please, write frequently to the overseas servicemen you know personally. It will help a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin. Gordon, this was a wonderful way to begin Christmas week. Well, Dorothy, they can put you in my Christmas stocking any time. <laughs> And you can be my Prince Charming any time you like. Mm, boy. <laughs> What's on the show train next week, Gordon? Well, it's year's end, Dorothy, and so we're going to remember the most exciting musical moments from a glorious year. Dorothy Kirsten will be here to help us review the highlights of 51 Railroad Hour Weeks in 53. And, uh, by the way, we're expecting you back again, Dorothy, early in February. Well, until then, Merry Christmas and Happy 1954. Well, thank you, and the same to you, Dorothy. Many happy Christmases, and, by the way, to all of you folks. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroad, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. Gordon McRae can be seen in Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. So goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. A portion of the preceding program was transcribed. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, the voice of Firestone features Eleanor Stieber on the NBC radio network.